307 Outdoors. How's everybody doing? Today we're going to go check out an elk hunting video. Now this year was a really good year for me because I actually drew two elk tags. Now I have a lot read a couple years ago is I wouldn't have been able to put in for big game until this year. But that all changed and I got to put in and boom, I got two elk licenses as an 11 year old. So let's go check out the second elk hunt of 2021. Tagging along for this hunt is my dad, my grandpa, a friend Jack, and my Uncle Todd. We only have a weekend's hunt, so we only have a couple days to get the job done. Did you know there's four subspecies of elk on the North American continent? There's the Tule Oak, the Roosevelt Oak, the Manitoba Oak, and the Rocky Mountain Oak. Rocky Mountain Oak is what we're going after. Now for this hunt, I have an antler list tag, which means I have to shoot a cow or a calf. This first evening, we hiked back into this real good spot, and it was snowing, and it was cold. But regardless of the weather, we snuck in there, got hunkered down, and waited for the elk to show up. But we sat there for what seemed forever. My Uncle Todd had his real nice camera set up and everything, so he could get a real nice close-up shot of the elk once they come in. We just sat there watching, listening, glassing, and a little bit of shivering. But I even fell asleep and woke myself up snoring. But at the end of the day, the elk didn't come in, and the sun started to come down, so we hiked back to the buggy. That evening, when we get back to the buggy, my dad's just standing there with his arms crossed, and he finally says, are you hearing this? My grandpa did hear it, but he thought I was messing around with a cow call. And everybody settles down and listens, and there is elk chirping back and forth 100 to 200 yards away. And there's nothing we can do about it because it's too dark, but it always is pretty cool to listen to them. Back at camp, we filled our stomachs with nice warm food, devised a plan for the next day, hunkered down in our nice warm sleeping bags. Did you know calf elk were born with spots? It keeps some camouflage from the predators. After a quick breakfast, we headed into a spot that has beautiful scenery and usually we find quite a few elk in there. Now, there was fresh snow on the ground and we didn't find any sort of elk sign back there. So, I guess it's back to the drawing board. After walking the ridge for just a little longer, we headed out to a spot that wasn't that far from where we were already at. We cut across some fresh elk tracks and we followed them for quite a while until we butted up against private property. I could see them out there there wasn't anything we could do about it. So we headed back to camp, ate some lunch, figured out a plan for the rest of the day. Did you know elk are ruminants just like cattle? This means they have four chambers in their stomach. This allows them to get all the nutrients out of their food. After an elk eats, it regurgitates its food and chews it a second time. This is called chewing their cud. Yummy! That afternoon, we changed up everything. We headed out of the mountains to see if any elk had moved out to their winter range. We knew there were elk in the timber, but it never hurts to check the sagebrush in the late season. We spent several hours in the desert before we found fresh elk sign. Not too long after we found the fresh spore, my grandpa spotted about 20 head, moving really fast about a mile away. Now all we have to do is figure out a way to approach them, try to get one down. So they heard that we saw a split up and several of them went in some service bear. Now let's see how close we can get. Now there's a goalie between me and the elk, but until I get there, I'm in the wide open. Elk and moose are both part of the deer family. But in some parts of Europe, they actually call what we refer to in the US as moose, elk. All right, we made it to the goalie, but I still have a lot of ground to cover before I can get a shot off. It took some crawling, but I'm finally closing the distance. These elk are holding in tight, and I really want to seal the deal. I get set up, but I don't have a shot, and I really want to get closer. I kept moving forward, and most of the footage looks like this. Staying low and hoping I don't bump them, I pushed forward. In about 300 yards, I ran out of cover. I was probably lucky. 
lucky that the only elk in view were some spikes. No cow probably wouldn't have let me get that close. But the problem is, is I can't shoot spikes, so I had to wait. Then a calf steps out, which calves are pretty small, they sure are good eating, so I decided to go for it. The first two shots felt good, and on the second shot, I watched him go down. But he got his feet under him and started following the herd. He tried for a third shot and missed just behind him. Alright, I got a shot on this cow. She went up around the corner, so I'm gonna go see if I can find her. from them. They just would not come out. The, all we could see were spikes and eventually this calf stepped out and they took a shot. Uh, I don't know about the first one but the second one definitely got a good one. So she actually ran around here. Uh, she fell down and uh, we thought she went further uh, down the hill but we had Jack Skinner came up here and he Founder, so. Uncle Todd, thanks for coming. Grandpa, thanks for coming. Jack Skinner, thanks for coming. All right, guys, we got down. Now the work begins. I thank God every day for having the opportunity to live this life. Hunting is just not about filling the freezer. It's really about making great memories with great people. At the end of the day, memories are the best trophy you can ask for. Thank you for riding along with me, guys. If you like the video, hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.